Today we're going to set up and cycle three breeding shrimp tanks for Caridina shrimp. I'm going to show you the first 12 weeks of shrimp tanks life condensed down into one video. Sit back, relax and enjoy. The size of the tanks is the same and they are 37 by 40 by 33 centimeter tall with approximately volume of 50 liters which is around 13 US gallons. I made all three tanks the same way with the glass partition at the back to create an undergravel filter, my favorite filtration for Caridina. This way I can fit around 4 liters of aqua soil inside each filter and this is quite a lot of soil for tanks this size. I used ADA Amazonia soil golden version for two of the tanks and master soil for another tank and this is the first time I'm using this soil so we're going to find out how it works in this video. Once I filled the tanks with the soil I sprinkled approximately 4 grams of bacterial powder on top of the soil. I've used bacterial powder I've got from Taiwan in two of the tanks including the tank with master soil and in one of the tank with ADA Amazonia I've used bacterial powder I've got from Qualdrop and this PC Bacter and Biobacter. I never used these products before so today we're gonna see how they perform. After that I filled the tanks with RO water and then I waited for two weeks. It's been already over two weeks since we start cycling the tanks and the, every tank starts to develop slightly differently. We have a very interesting result, so let me show you quickly. Okay guys, I'm gonna start with the top tank and we set this tank up with AD Amazonia soil and Taiwanese bacterial powder. We have a quite good result so far. We have this cotton-like algae start to growing on the surface, which is a good sign. We have a little bit of these brown spots on the glass little bit of dust green algae on the glass as well and here I have another tank and we set this tank up with master soil and we use the same Taiwanese bacterial powder and take a look at this result is looking good now you can see we have lots of green dust algae in the, inside this tank we also have this cotton like algae and now let's move to the last tank and this tank I set up with ADA Amazonia soil and with Qualdraw products. I'm happy with the result, how this tank is developing so far. And Qualdraw products are definitely the good products. You can see we have a lot of these brown clusters of algae and lots of the dust algae as well. So guys, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna do 50% water change and we're gonna add a little bit more bacterial powder. After the water change or during the water change, like in my case, I'm gonna add some bacterial powder in the tanks just to support some bacterial life. And I'm gonna add the same bacteria which we started the tanks. I'm not gonna mix bacteria because it's not recommended to mix any different bacteria. So I put approximately one gram of bacterial powder inside each tanks and I simply sprinkle bacterial powder on the surface of the water. Okay, I wanna do a quick update on the tank with master soil. And it's week three and I switch on the light today and I find lots of worms inside the tank. We have lots of lots of this disgusting worms inside now. All this uh, biofilm which is growing on the bacterial powder, the worms start to eat this. Yeah, so it's not kind of pleasant to have any tank, so I'll, I'll try to get rid of them as soon as possible. Guys, that's about week three and a half and I have a little issue here. As you can see, I have so many mosquitoes here. Like, take a look at this, it's like hundreds of them here. I think they multiply and they just live here because they, they need water to multiply and because it's nice and warm here, they, they breathe here. <laughs> I'm a mosquito breeder now, guys. <laughs> so I finally figured out that puzzle, guys. So those mosquitoes we saw, they weren't actually mosquitoes, they were midges. So it's like kind of looks like mosquitoes, but they don't bite. And the lava is actually a bloodworms, and I didn't know that. So those bloodworms we saw in the tank, they were actually a lava of that flies, or midges, and some of them eventually become midges again and start to fly above the tanks. That's why we saw so many of them there. <laughs> so mystery solved now. <laughs> Guys, I'm back with an update. It's been four and a half weeks since we start cycling our tanks and our tank's doing amazing. Let me show you. Okay, guys, take a look at this tank. <laughs> you cannot see much in this tank because we have lots of this cotton fluffy like algae overgrown this tank. Yeah, this is good result. I'm quite happy with that. In the meantime, I'm gonna give it a little clean. Let's move uh, the level below. And here we have a tank which I set up with this Quad Draw products. As you remember and here we have a lot of this brown like algae if we move to the next tank here this tank is on master soil and we don't have any of the cotton algae as well here and this is because we had some uh, worms issues in this tank 
And what's happened that bloodworms, they actually ate a lot of biofilm and cotton algae. So now at this stage, I'm going to do 50% of water change. I'm also going to clean the front glass of the tanks. And then I'm going to show you quickly what we're going to have inside of these tanks. Let's do it now. Okay, guys, take a look at these tanks now. They look much better. They're nice and clean. I managed to vacuum as much as possible of this cotton-like algae, especially from this tank. And I know some of you guys prefer to leave this algae alone and then put your shrimps and shrimps consume all this algae. And I used to do that before. But I noticed that the shrimps, they don't really like this algae and it takes ages for shrimps to consume all this algae. And take a look at the tank below. This is my favorite tank so far because take a look at this algae on the side. So all the tanks doing fantastic guys and I'm happy with the results so far. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more bacterial powder and take a look at the shrimps here in this tank. They are, look gorgeous guys, my favorite shrimps. Guys, I'm back with another update and we are at week number eight. That's mean we're very close to the end of the cycle and I'm very excited about that. So let me show you the tanks. Okay guys, let's start with the bottom tanks and here on the right we have a tank with the master soil and you can see the glass of this tank is almost clear from the algae. So not much of the dust algae here. And that's been like that for about two, three weeks already. And I think this tank is ready. The cycle is completed here. We're gonna check the water parameters in a second and we're gonna, we're gonna see if it's ready for shrimps. And let's check the tanks on the left. And here we have a AD Amazonia soil with quadro products and we have lots of algae on the glass. Lots of this algae we're gonna clean in a second. And the tank on the top, AD Amazonia with Taiwanese bacterial powder, we have also plenty of algae and we cannot see much inside the tank. Okay guys, now let's clean the front glass of these tanks to properly look inside and then we can check the water parameters. Amazing guys, this AD Amazonia is still dishing ammonia after eight weeks and it's still a little bit early to, to add some shrimps. And as you can see at the, the tank at the bottom, we also have some ammonia here. You can see the very dark green tube. And in this tank, is, we have a little bit more ammonia because this tank is one week younger. Guess if you want to be on the safe side, you want to wait until your ammonia gone completely before you're adding your shrimps. And as you can see in this tank on master soil, we have zero ammonia already. That's mean this tank is completely cycled and it's ready for shrimps now. But at this stage, I think it's gonna be completely fine to adding some plants and I'm gonna prepare some plants, guys, and we are gonna add them into these tanks. And guess if you know me, I like to have a mosses in my tanks. And because the shrimps like to graze on the moss, and it looks absolutely stunning. Take a look at this arch with the Fessidens moss. I very like how it looks and it also provides a lot of hiding space for shrimps. I also like to have a flame moss in my tanks. As you can see, we have a very big chunk here on the underground filter box at the side, you know, here as well. And I think we, it's no exception for our new tanks. I'm gonna add some coconut shells with the Fessidens moss and I'm gonna add some flame moss as well. Oh well, guys, take a look at the shrimps here. I'll start feeding them. So what's the plan for now? I'm gonna go to the shop. I'm gonna buy this coconut shell. Then we're gonna cut this coconut shell and create some arches like this, like we have in this tank. Then we're gonna trim this moss inside this tank. And whatever we got from trimming, we're gonna attach to the new coconut shell arches we've got from the new coconut. And then we're gonna place these arches inside our new tanks. And in a few weeks, the moss is gonna grow on the coconut shells and it's gonna look nice and beautiful like we have it in this tank. So let's do it now. Okay guys, I got my coconut from grocery store and expires today. So I want, before I cut it, I want to make a hole and drain all the coconut water from it. Here you go guys, we have a little bit of coconut water now and we can drink it. Mmm, very sweet. Guys, now once you empty your coconut from the water, you can cut it in half and you can use like a hacksaw, but because I'm too lazy and I want to do it very quick, I want to try to use the chop saw. It's a little bit risky. Don't try to do it at home, but I will try to do it. I'm not sure if I can do it without losing my fingers. I hopefully not. <laughs> Let's do it now. Yeah, I'm a bit scary now, but I have to do it, guys. Yeah, I made it. It was a little bit risky, but I made it. Okay, guys, this is what you're gonna get once you remove the coconut flesh. You're gonna end up with a shell like this. Very nice. So now we can cut it with a jigsaw. Oh my God, I forgot to switch on the camera. I thought I'm recorded, so my my bad, my bad. I apologize for that. So I cut it with a jigsaw like this, so I just to show you quickly. So it's simply I just cut it around like this. And now it's time to attach some moss on top of it. And we also have the trim from the moss here. So what I do, I simply just to distribute the moss over the surface uh, with the even layer, like this. 
So this is what I've got at the end guys and now it's time to attach the moss to the coconut and I'm gonna use just a thin thread and I'm gonna just wrap the thread on top of the coconut like this and just attach it to the coconut. You can also use a um, super glue to do that but I'm not very big fan of super glue. This is it, the first arch is finished and I'm gonna place it in the bucket of water for now. So guys, I also thinking to add another plants into the tanks and that's a Bussy Philandra, my favorite plants for a shrimp tank. So very slow growing and uh, very good to have in a shrimp tank. So I'm gonna attach this beautiful Bussy Philandra to pieces of wood which I already cut. So you can see I have a little piece of wood which I cut from the aquarium bog wood and we're gonna just glue it with the super glue on top of this wood and place them in the tank. I think it's gonna look awesome, right? Let's start with this one, it's Bussy Philandra Sintang is called and it looked like more like like a newbie so i would say because i'm more like the bucephalandra like this with the wavy leaves and this one is called bucephalandra bibis so bibis probably my the, my the favorite bucephalandra plant i also have um, another bucephalandra here which is called bucephalandra bibis as well but why it's so small i'm not sure about that so yeah maybe it's different bibis and this one is bucephalandra lamandau another one so we all of them we're gonna attach different bushes flyer to different pieces of wood so first i guess we need to separate them from the rock hole and it's very easy just to yeah it's very easy no problem at all so what we're going to do is just to glue them like this on top of the wood i think like this and this is the last one guys and it looks awesome. So our first tank and coconut shell with the moss as well. Just here. Mm. Looking good so far guys. <laughs> and guys at the back I'm gonna put a small amount of flame moss. And I think that's it for this tank. So now let's put some more plants in our next tank. Now. Looks beautiful, huh? So I guess guys, I'll see you in one week with another update. Guys, I'm back again with another update and it's been exactly one week since my last update. So we are at week number nine. And today I want to check pH of the water in all of the tanks. And I also want to check once again, ammonia in the water. And I hope we can get zero ammonia in this tank. And if we are gonna get zero ammonia, I'm gonna start preparing this tank for adding shrimps. And we definitely ready to add some shrimps in the bottom tank with master soil because there is no ammonia in this tank. So we're ready to add some shrimps here. And today we're gonna do it. So finally, we start adding shrimps in this tank after nine weeks. Yeah, so let's check ammonia and let's check pH of the water. Guys, I just tested pH of the water in all the tanks and I have quite a good result. In the tanks with ADA Amazonia, I have pH roughly about 5.5 and pH of the water in the tank with master soil is slightly higher. It's roughly about 5.7, 5.8. It's still good pH as long as below six, I'm quite happy about that. So it's not as low as ADA Amazonia, but it's still low enough. So now let's do another test of ammonia and see what we have. But before I do ammonia test, let's just a quick clean this glass from algae. Okay guys, I just tested ammonia in all the tanks. And as you can see, we still got some ammonia in the tank. This tank with the Amazonia and it's at week nine, we have some ammonia. And from my experience, it's completely normal. Last time ammonia start to go away after about 10 weeks time. So we need to wait at least one more week before we add some shrimps. I know guys, it's very, very difficult to wait. You always want to add your shrimps as soon as possible. And you're always thinking like, why is not going away? Why is still ammonia in the tank? But you have to be patient, it's completely normal. So this tank is gonna be fully cycle in a week or two and we have to wait for that and take a look at the bottom tank as well we have even more ammonia here and the reason for that because this tank is one week younger and it's at week eight so at least two more weeks to wait until we're adding shrimps but this tank with master soil we have zero ammonia I think the ammonia stopped leaching in this tank 
at the week about six. So if you want to have a quick result, definitely use mustard soil. But I'm not sure how potent is this soil. I haven't tested it completely yet. This is the first time I'm using it, so I cannot recommend it yet. I probably need about a year or so just to completely test this tank. So today we're gonna start adding shrimps and we're gonna start adding shrimps in this tank because this tank is ready now. So we can add some shrimps here but we can still wait for another week or two until we add some shrimps here because I don't want to add the shrimps if we still have ammonia reading and it's, it's completely not healthy to do that. But this tank is ready for shrimps, so let's do it now. Hey guys, before we add the shrimps, of course, I'm gonna do a massive water change. I'm gonna change about roughly about 90% of water because this water contains a lot of nitrates and I want to withdraw as much as nitrates as possible to make the water very clean. Hey guys, this is how much water I'm changing right now. It's almost 90%, probably 80%. And uh, you see I am dripping water back with my uh, auto top off system. If you top off the water very slowly like I do, um, there is a risk that your algae can dry out and die. You don't want to do that because this is very valuable food for your shrimp. This is organic and natural food. So what you have to do, you just use this uh, big pipette and then just, uh, just to spray some water on top of the algae. So make it wet again. So maybe once uh, 10 minutes or, some, or so, just do it. Make sure it get plenty of water and it stay moist. You grow up for like many weeks and you don't want to lose it because that's going to be a food for your baby shrimp. Okay, now let's wait for the water to change and then we can add some salts there, make TDS 110 and then we add some shrimps here in this tank. And guys, by now you're probably wondering what, which shrimps I'm going to put into the new tank and take a look at the pile of shrimps here, guys. This is supposed to be my mixed pinter tank and um, now I have so many blue and red balls here because pinters start to reproduce sometimes some blue and red balls then the blue balls start to mix back with the pinter making you more blue balls so this tank is slightly overpopulated, overcrowded so I want to reduce the population of shrimps in this tank and I want to remove all the blue and red balls from here make this tank is more beautiful with more pinter shrimps rather than having like a pale blue balls here. So you can see some blue balls here, they're not very good. So I'm probably gonna first separate all of them and then I'm gonna call them there in that tank. Another reason guys why I'm gonna do it because I never used master soil before and I don't know how it's performed. I don't know you know, if it's good or bad. So I don't wanna risk the expensive shrimp. So the first I want to try it and test it with my least expensive shrimps like a blue and red balls. So now let's take them out from this tank and let's put them in the new tank and hopefully they're gonna be happy there. Yeah, guys, let's do it now. I'm quite enjoying catching the shrimps, guys. I find it very relaxing. Okay, guys, take a look at the shrimps here inside this little jar. And we have roughly about 100 of blue and red balls here. They all gonna go into this tank once we complete the water change. Okay guys, our shrimps are all inside this tank and take a look at them. They all start to graze on this yummy biofilm and algae which is plenty we have in this tank. We've been growing this natural food for our shrimps for more than 9 weeks and here you go guys, now they're enjoying it. We also have 4 or 5 buried females in this tank which is very good because we can test the baby survival rate very fast so within a few weeks they're gonna hatch their eggs and we're gonna see how the baby is surviving in this tank I'm very excited to test this master soil in this tank and hopefully we're gonna see a good result in a few weeks Hey everyone, it's been another week just passed since my last update, that's mean we're at week number 10 and it sounds like a lucky number because we've got another tank ready. I just checked ammonia a few days ago and we have zero ammonia in this tank, so it's ready for shrimps and we're gonna add some shrimps today. So let's look at the tanks. Here you go guys, this is the tank which is ready for shrimps and this is the top tank with ADA Amazonia and yesterday I already did a massive water change, I changed about 90% of water with the fresh RO water, then I remineralized the water to about 110 ppm. So without further ado, let's catch the shrimps and add into this tank. And here you go guys, take a look at the shrimps inside this tank. They're all gonna move into the new tank. 
they are black galaxy pinto shrimps and the reason why i want to move the shrimps is because this tank is not doing great so this tank is about two years old and about seven months ago i decided to change uh, soil inside the ugf boxes and i even had a video on my channel showing you doing that and I, I thought it's gonna fix the problem of the old tank because this tank's getting old, the shims slow, slow down of, of breeding. It normally happens once your soil starts to losing the juice. So I decided to change the soil, but it didn't fix the problem. And I think the problem was because the soil is not very good. The soil name is Easter Shrimp pH 5.5. Whenever I use this soil, I don't have much success with the shrimps. The shrimps doing well, they're not dying. I can see some buried females. You can see, I think, one of, one of the buried females there and a few there as well. So the shrimps are getting buried, but I don't see any babies. I mean, I see some babies, but not many at all. I use the soil in this tank at the bottom with my uh, Golden Galaxy shrimps as well. And I had the same problem, guys. I, I bought the shrimps like roughly about eight months ago and I don't have any single babies. I always see a buried shrimps here and at this moment uh, I know that at least two shrimps here buried, I don't see any babies. So this tank is another example when I use Easter Shrimp pH 5.5 soil uh, with very bad result and I'm not gonna use it again, guys. So guys, I'm gonna close this tank down. I'm gonna reset it completely once I move the shrimps. This is gonna be another my good project. So if you don't wanna miss it, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And also I'm gonna do the same with this tank. As you can see, I have um, even algae issues here. I know this soil is promised you to keep your pH at about 5.5 level, but in reality, in a couple months, it stop buffering your water and it's kind of become an inert soil. And if you have an inert soil in your tank, your pH more likely to be higher than six you're not gonna see much breeding activity. That's why it's very important to use a very good quality soil like AD Amazonia, like in my case. Okay guys, enough talking. Let's catch all the shrimps, all of them from this tank, and then we're gonna move them to the new home, yeah? Let's do it now. And guys, take a look at them. I just got the two buried shrimps here. And I have many of them in this tank. I think I've got at least 10. Believe me or not, yeah, this one, she, she, she escaped, one escaped, yeah. So, I have many, many of them here as well. <laughs> so excited, so I hope this tank is gonna be working good for them. And we managed to get some, a lot of babies in that tank. Yeah, this one, this shim is beautiful. I very like her. Take a look at her. That's definitely here because she buried. So it's definitely mama shim. Yeah, excited. Here you go guys, take a look at all the shrimps in this little box. We have a lot of them. Oh, calm down, calm down. They spooky a bit. Oh my God, look at them. <laughs> They're a little bit scared to see me waving with my hand. So I need to be careful. I don't want to spook them too much and stress them too much. So many of them here guys. So I'm very excited to see them breeding in this new environment. So enough talking, let's release them into the new home. Okay guys, I'm ready to put all the shrimps inside this new home. Here you go, I'm very excited, so many shrimps guys. Take a look at them, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, so awesome guys. So many shrimps guys. Nice, I'm very excited. Alright guys, take a look inside this tank, take a look at all the shrimps. You can feel from my voice, I'm very excited guys, because I was waiting for this moment for over 10 weeks guys. And I'm super excited to see so many shrimps here. I think we have at least 60 of them here mix of juveniles and adults and little babies most of them are adults because they didn't breed too much in that tank so and we have so many buried shrimps in this tank and take a look at this buried mama here full of eggs if you look at the shrimps you can see they don't move too much and the reason for that because they have so much organic and natural food they just don't need to move they just can stay in one place and consume the tasty algae and biofilm they don't need to 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 look for the food the, the food is everywhere literally everywhere take a look at this glass take a look at this soil it's just this is the result of 10 week cycle this is why i don't like to rush the cycle i like to cycle it's nice and long this is when you grow a lot of this natural food for your shrimps they're not going to be feeling stressful because they have lots and lots of organic food for them and once they hatch the babies the baby survival rate is going to be insane here the baby going to have a lot of food this tank is brand new and with the nice and low ph this is ideal environment for the baby to survive they're not going to starve to death also we have a little bit of algae start to grow on the moss 
and that's why the moss is not growing very well. So this shrimp is going to be take care of that. They're going to consume this algae, they're going to clean this. And if you take a look at this tank downstairs, where we put the shrimps like a week ago, and you can see this moss is nice and clean. And the back moss is nice and clean because the shrimps consume most of the algae already. I didn't feed them in purpose so they can clean this tank. And guess I'm not going to feed the shrimps as well. I'm going to wait for another week or two until I'm going to give him my first feeding because they have a plenty of food for weeks, guys. You see that. If you want to properly cycle your tank, don't rush it, be patient and wait for the good amount of time, at least eight weeks, for the algae, for the biofilm to grow, for the nitrifying bacteria to establish and then you're going to be good to go and then you're going to have a good success, guys. Yeah, of course, I'm going to get back to you once this tank is ready in a week or so and then I'm going to give you a further update on the shrimps. Guys, I'm back with another update. It's week 12 and it's been two weeks since we added shrimps in this tank and this tank is doing absolutely great. I have a very good feeling about this tank, guys. And take a look at the shrimps here. They're doing fantastic here. I also see a lot of little tiny babies here. That's mean maybe one or two shrimp already hatched the eggs and we have lots of babies here in this tank. And I very like this tank, guys. And take a look at the back. I guess it's more yummy stuff growing on UGF box. And guys, take a look at this plant here, Bussy Falandra plant on the on the wood and the shrimps absolutely love to hang around on this plant and you can see it start to be very clean now so it used to be covered with algae and now the, sh the shrimps did a good job of cleaning this tank as you can see it's looked much cleaner than we just when we added the shrimp i think the tank used to look like this tank at the bottom which by the way is already cycled and i, I just checked ammonia yesterday and zero ammonia so it's time to add the shrimps in this tank and as you can see here we we have bussy under plant but it's a little bit overgrown with the uh, dust algae because we have an insane amount of dust algae growing in this tank. I just cleaned the front glass and it was completely covered with the dust algae. And it's absolutely normal, guys, because the soil got lots of minerals inside. You can see the tank with master soil is doing absolutely good as well. No dead shrimp so far. The shrimp is doing fantastic. I haven't fed them yet and you can see this tank is completely clean. The fessidens moss, it's, it's looked nice and healthy, nice and green. Bussy philander plants is nice and green and here as well so i'm completely happy with this plant you can see that flame moss is growing fantastic as well here so i think today we're gonna feed the shrimps as well because it was three weeks here the shrimps haven't got any food at all i also wanted to give a little bit of food to, for these shrimps they've been here for two weeks without food and you can see they almost clean everything with the cotton like algae here we have a little bit left of cotton like algae just in the middle and Remember I said the shrimps, they, they don't really like this algae and you can see they, they still haven't finished it yet. It's not too much stuff here. We put a little bit of plants, but remember this is the breeding tank. We want to see the shrimps. If any shrimp die here, you can spot it straight away. So the only shrimps you might not see is just behind this moss because I know there's many, many shrimps there. They just like to hide, especially the buried shrimps they like to hide. And I know that underneath of this coconut shell, we have lots of buried shrimps. I saw like one or two at least. So finally, guys, our last tank completely cycled. We have zero ammonia here. And yesterday I already changed the 90% of water in this tank. And I remineralized the water to 110 TDS. As you can see, we have a tiny babies here. Uh, you can see here as well one on the soil here i'm not sure if you can see him so <laughs> the, the wh why they are there is because i just put the moss here and they've been on the moss i've done this many many times when i move the moss around i always move uh, babies with the moss so we have a little tiny babies and they managed to survive here it was some ammonia here before and they, they live here for two weeks and they they're absolutely fine okay and i was talking let's get some shrimps for this tank guys Guys, take a look at the shrimps here in this tank and they are yellow galaxy fishbone shrimp or also known as uh, golden galaxy fishbone shrimps. Very beautiful shrimps and I haven't managed to breed them and the main reason for that is because of this crappy soil I'm using here. Easter shrimp pH 5.5 is absolutely garbage. I'm not going to use it again as I mentioned before. I'm looking forward to completely reset this tank with AD Amazonia soil and I'm going to do it in the very near future. So now let's take all of the shrimps out from this tank and put them in a new tank. Here you go guys, I put all the shrimps in this little acrylic box as I normally do. We have 17 shrimps here and imagine guys, we have 4 berry shrimps, 4 of them. I'm so excited to see 4 berry shrimps, I didn't expect that. We have 3 berry shrimps here. At the front you can see they, they're all together three of them they are kind of a little bit transparent 
and you can easily see the eggs and then one of them at the back and this is a good timing because it couldn't be better than that four baby shrimps in a new tank and i hope all the baby is going to be survive in this environment because we have a perfect environment for them right now so now let's put them in a new home okay my little fellow shrimps i hope you're gonna enjoy these new apartments and i wish you to breed a lot guys Ooh yo <laughs> awesome okay guys our shrimps are inside this tank after 12 long weeks actually it was 11 weeks for this tank anyway it's still a long time and we have enough biofilm and algae in this tank for for weeks and weeks i would say even months probably i'm not gonna put any food in this tank because it's 17 shrimps only and we have plenty of the food if you can look at the side of the glass you can see we have so much algae so much biofilm so now i'm not gonna do anything in this tank i'm probably gonna do the first water change in about two three weeks and i'm gonna do a 10 percent of water change add a little bit bacterial powder just a tiny bit so hopefully we're gonna see many many babies soon and i'm gonna give you an update on this tank in the near future guys i'm gonna end my video with the shrimp feeding and it is the very first feeding after several weeks the shrimp's been in the new tanks and if you want to see a macro footage of shrimps with uh, nice music please continue to watch to the very end thank you all guys for watching this video especially all of you guys who are watching until this moment please like subscribe and i'll see you in the next one